take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Father, we thank you this day. We ask that you teach us your word. We are not tired of listening. We are not tired of hearing. The entrance of your word give it light. Thank you, ancient of days. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be discussing, I mean, we'll share briefly and then discuss on emphasis on scriptures and scriptural doctrines in holy more. Also, grounding the members on doctrinal messages. Amen. Jeremiah chapter number 23. Jeremiah 23, I read verse number 22. It says, but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have torn them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Amen. If they had stood in my counsel, that is the scripture for us. This is God actually speaking here. I had caused my people to hear my words. The Bible says, Jesus, is, God says, they should have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil doing. That goes to say that wherever evil is on the increase is the evidence of the absence of the word of God. Because the word of God has the capacity to put sin out of a man's life. I remember in the book of art when Peter was explaining to the brethren, and you know he went and dined with the, with the with the Gentile Christians. You know, they somehow they were arguing with Peter, what must he go and eat with, with people of this nature? But Peter made a statement that the Lord gave me words that we cost their salvation. That should be in the book of art. Of the apostles chapter 11 the word has the power to convict and convert see, see verse uh, at 11 verse 14 he said who shall take thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved you see that tell thee words that both thee and thy house shall be saved so you see there should be, there should be more emphasis on scriptures in holiness 
revival movement. Emphasis in our chapter meetings, in our states meeting, there should be emphasis on the world. Thank God for revelation. Revelation is good. But there should be more emphasis on the word of God. More emphasis. Something happened more often than not. I rush from KB to Abuja. And I'll sit down. I'll be selecting messages. Messages. And once I return back in KB, Sokoto, Zamfara, and, and part of those nights I'm coordinating, I will send messages to them. I will send all those cassettes to them. Please. This message, they should, they should listen to it. This message, in fact, let us emphasize more on messages. Yet our bread can be grounded on the knowledge of the scriptures. We must bring down to the scriptures. In our meetings, in whatever we are doing, there should be emphasis on the word. There is this belief that the law of, of emphasis is what? It's repetition. Repetition is a law of emphasis. We must emphasize seriously on the word. Even the book of Joshua, the Lord says, the Lord made a statement there to Joshua that if you must succeed, Joshua, if you must make it, Joshua, he said, This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. If I may ask our state coordinators and others, how much of holy more messages preached by our daddy do we have in our states? How much of the messages do we have? I have so many of them. So many. Anyone I see, I grabbed. I will ensure that I watch it. And then please, this chapter, take it there. Take it there. Almost every week, I visit our chapters. I go to Sokoto to visit our chapters there. I go to Zamfara. I go to I go to, I, 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 to, I, to Niger. Oh, about this five states, I move from every week, and we emphasize on the world. Emphasize on the world. There is this message that he preached in a in I think that should be in Kaduna. Characteristic of the end time. How many of us have watched that message? I, I mean, besides those on Kaduna, how many of us, please? Can I see your hand? Just two, you can imagine. That message, you need to listen to that message. The characteristic of the end time. We need it. What about, I think he the other one, ignorant, uh, the danger of ignorance in the church and in the world. So many messages. So many. So many. They are piled there with me in KB. Share it all, all over. And any chapter we open. I do drop the following messages with them. Uh, worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. Adornment. God's holiness and judgment. Truth and, and Christian giving. If I drop this, I will get messages. Messages. Everywhere. Even we opened three chapters in one week, two weeks ago. Three chapters in one week. And in all those chapters, I selected messages. Some of them are here. Some of the chapters are here from Sokoto and Zamfara. They are here in Nigeria. They are here with me. Anytime I'm visiting any of our chapter, I carry my bag. And in that bag, different messages. Not preached by anyway, preached by Horimo, by our director. I will compile them. I will compile those messages. I say, please have this. Have this for the chapter. And, and every week, and presently by the grace of, of God, God is helping us over there. Actually, it's not easy. Present within the space of six to eight months, I'm coordinating not less than about 25 chapters in KB. In fact, we open about seven chapters in Niger. I was telling Daniel that I'm planning now we are entering Mokwa, Jeba, and Kenji, carrying the messages with us. So called, in fact, tomorrow will be a week I left my house. We've been in Sokoto for five days. Come and see crowd. Everything was message of the movement. Messages and the rest of them. In fact, even the message I preached on Sunday in Sokoto, it was the message Daddy preached in Brimming KB. I look for that message. I told Daddy in December, you see, as came to our church in Brimming KB. And what was the message? I think maintaining and retaining righteousness in the church. I look for that message. Then on Sunday, after much prayer, that message down upon me. I've forgotten the verse that he is wanted to call on him. 
I said, no. I searched the scripture and I got the verse. I got the chapter I was speaking for. Joshua chapter 22. Emphasize on that. In fact, so we came with the CD of the Sokoto Kuse. From Sokoto, we just came in here. And about how many chapters by God's here and there, the emphasis is on the world. Thank God for revelation. But we should focus on the world. On the word of God. We should focus on it. Why? Because the Bible says that I commend you to God and what? And to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among what? Among the saints. There should be emphasis on the word. He said, as newborn babes desire what? The sincere meek of the world. Sincere meek of the world. The Lord taught me something. Somebody ran mad. I mean terribly mad. In the army barrack. In fact, they have to tie her both hands and feet. Soldiers came. Habali skin. Mariam skin. Over there in KB. Nothing they did not do. For about seven days. Later, after much prayer, I went there. And the Lord lay in my heart. I'm just cutting the long story short. He said, use the word on her. Use the word. And this was done in my spirit. John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. After quoting that chapter, I command the demon to get out because, it, because I, I didn't apply it. For God so loved this woman. After that, get out of her, and the demon of madness left her. Until today, she is all right. World, the world. He sent forth his world and he let them and deliver them from their destruction. Emphasis on the world. Even that testimony I gave was it in Massacre also concerning the lady and, and that was creepy, the Muslim lady they brought. In fact, I sat down with her, I was opening scriptures. And that day, I, I don't know why, the word was sounding so sweet in my mouth. Very sweet. Quoting here, quoting here, eyes open. Now, after you have to cry, stand up. And the lady stood up. I mean, I lift her, and that was her paralysis left her. Completely the Muslim lady. Emphasis should be on the world. Our chapter leader, at one, one of our Amibara chapter leader from Zuri is here. They brought a girl for prayers. They said that the lady has white snake and black snake. I said, how can that be? The parents say that they prefer the white snake because the black snake, once it manifested in her, she be misbehaving. But if it is a white snake, I say snake is snake, no matter the color. No snake is good. So after sharing like that, then I can't express in house very well. Do I'm from that area? I mean, I'm working that area. Then I told the pastor, Pastor Bullis is there. I said, Pastor, lead this lady to Christ. I, I mean, share the word. He want to say no, don't lead her to Christ. Right? Share the word. Use Hausa. Speak to her and say, Hausa, share the word of God with her. After he share it with her, I say, it's okay. Let's lead her to Christ. Something happened, men and brethren. Emphasis on the word. As we finished leading this young lady to Christ, I think the mother was there. And then I stood, so, so that we shall commence the deliverance prayer. I was just only quoting the scriptures. I said, John chapter 1 verse 4. It says, uh, the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Before we finish making that statement, the lady began to manifest. The pastor is there with me. The chapter leader. And that was how the lady was delivered. Emphasize on the world. Emphasize on the world. Emphasize on the world. There should be emphasis on the world. God is helping us in this KB Sokoto. As I was coming, coming yesterday, they are coming from me. I said, thank God. Because I sent one of our chapter leaders here, Sons and I sent it to Cassina twice. They call. We are ready. Come over. I am ready. Cassina. December, you see Cassina in here. Amen. You will see Cassina here. Amen. Already we have gathered most of the messages. Preach in this movement. And we send it there. Thank. Revelation is good. We have them. But I emphasize more on the world. And church, there are results. I tell you that that's in a week, two to three chapters are open. Emphasis is on the word. It's on the word of God. Emphasis. Christian dressing, I think. How many of us have this message preached by daddy on, you see, 
the addressing of the godly. You need to listen to it. It's there. Rooted and breathed up in Christ. It's there. I came in, was it yesterday I came in? I saw one message. Is it hunger and truth for holiness and righteousness? Immediately I grab it. I saw one again. Is it deliverance from the is it deliverance of uh, uh, is it deliverance of is it be, it just a mistake? Is it, is it evil man from sin that, that, that was it. I, I was talking about and the peace. How can I have this message? I want it. I love the topic. I want the message. Let's emphasize on message. If I may ask here, most of the seeds who say in this movement is more of what they are more on what on revelations, isn't it? Revelation. Send me Linda Part One, five hundred. Send me the other one, two hundred. How many of the life cry do we have? It was the life cry that walked on me and dealt with me. I was a preacher of righteousness, but no righteousness in me. I was on my way to hell. It was that message. It was that message. It was that message. And that is the message that gave me breakthrough in these five states. The day I came to Massacre, was it last year or so? May. After I got that message, I said, no. I said, from Niger to Casina, they will get this material. And Andy is here. Andy is in Kaduna. I will send. I sent to KB. Sent to Niger. Sent to Sanfara. Sent to Casina. I was spreading the messages. The life cry. Emphasy on what? On scriptures. And scriptural doctrine in, in Holy More. We should emphasize it. So I beg to say this. Like that very chapter later that says something. During the... I, I, contribution. He watched a CD plate and then whether he showed it in some churches of that nature. And there is the state coordinator of River State there. It's not done. It's not done. Look at the havoc that it has caused. Look at the havoc. In fact, if it should be looked into, people that are not granted should not be, should not be your government coordinators. It should not be. At least before you be a chapter leader, you must be grounded. I'm, I'm not on point two. You must be grounded on what? You must be, on what? You must be grounded in the scriptures. You should know. This one come, you grab, show it, and show it, show it, show it there. It can't happen in KB and Sukkot and Zanfara. It can't happen. I'm telling you the truth. It can't happen. In fact, in one of the crusades we had in Tungamagaja in Niger State, over 400, it's a small town, 400 came. And of course, immediately we finished the crusade. A program commenced. The chapter leader in Zuru actually came. He brought somebody that I, I, I don't know. He said, This person, I, told, I share with daddy. In fact, one of the leaders there, I was not comfortable. I said, No. I said, Please, in holiness movement, there is leadership. We don't allow people to share revelation that is not confirmed and approved by the international director. I sent all of them a test on no condition should any coordinator, any chapter leader, do so. If there's anybody like that, bring after interview, bring the person to me. I will talk to daddy. If God to bring him to Abuja, daddy must have interviewed. He hear from God before he can be testified in our chapters. Let's emphasize on the world. I know all the 25 chapters. I have all their days of activities. All. Praise God. How was today's activity? How was the turn up? I thought, I, I, I didn't ask, which message do you put? Which message? Please. You see, somehow, I think, was it you know that said that God is speaking at this moment as if that it is like the act of Noah. So we must be careful. We must be careful. This is the hope of the world now. Come down to Sokoto and see what happened in Sokoto. And the rest of them. Come down to because almost every two, two weeks we are holding pro and program in one state to another state within that my zone. And come and see the response. We emphasize on the world. Please let us go back to the Bible. In holiness movement, see daddy, a Bible here, Bible here. I said, when did this man sit down to study all these things? In fact, I love listening to his messages. You kept quoting, 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 quoting. I think then we step coordinators. Our chapter here too, we should imitate the same thing. Let's bend down. In fact, see how he cleared that issue on the issue of my father is a soldier man. My brother, you know, my younger brother is in the army. I thought well to try to in the army. So that means all of them are going to hell. But look at the way that he brought it, I mean, brought it out from the scripture. And that silenced everything. Let's go back to the scriptures. 
emphasis should be on the scriptures. May the Lord help us. In Jesus name. We have some discussion to make here. One of the questions is this. Amen. One of the questions is this. I want us to discuss. Why is it there is no there is no crave of God's word in the heart of men today? Why is it there is no crave? That hungry, thirsting spirit of God's word in the heart of men today. Why? Yes. Let's discuss. Why is it that there is no crave, that hunger, that desire of the world in the heart of men today? Yes, sir. See somebody here. I think that first person there, that, the, the man behind that lady. Please give them the mic, please. I think after that, we give it to the woman behind him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think the, the, the question, the answer to that, uh, every doctrine has a power behind it. In Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible said, the spirit in the air, now at work in the heart, of children of disobedient. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, it said, For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without the law. The law. And the, where there is no God, Satan is involved. And the God of this earth, because of the opportunity, the old Christians gave the devil for not preaching the sound or total doctrine of Jesus. Satan capitalized on that opportunity to seal the heart of people with wrong doctrine. And this wrong doctrine, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he said, this is the doctrine of demons. So because of not giving them the pure word of God, in 1 Corinthians chapter 124, Paul said that Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God. In Romans chapter 117, he said, the, 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 the salvation is the power. The word of God is the power unto salvation and salvation is deliverance so we have the word of god is not preached in its entirety it becomes impotent and when there's impotency no matter the effort there will be no productivity so and that is the problem it, like you you have made a, a, an emphasis on the word and the, we are the product of the word you will maintain plastic with plastic you maintain iron with iron so since we are the product of the word and the maintenance of our life is found in the word because in Hebrew 1 to G, Bible said that Jesus is the sustenance of the earth by the power of his word. So I, I think in my own knowledge because people are no longer hunger for word because the whole truth is not preached and we have been given a wrong signal that we can bypass the word to get what we want in the kingdom. It's all right. God bless you, sir. Amen. God bless you. Yes, the woman behind him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One thing I see there is when there is no holiness, when sin has taken over everywhere, even in the church, in the house of God, if the truth is not preached, how can they open the Bible? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says righteousness or righteousness is not a nation, but sin is a reproach. There is a reproach in the church, not even outside anymore. If the truth is not there, if holiness and righteousness is not there, the truth will not be there. And the truth is the Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I see this more reason why they don't really go into the word of God deeply. Praise the Lord. All right. Because of the presence of sin, that is why there is no interest of God's word in the heart of men. That's a country. Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll say the reason why people are 
not really taking the word very important is laziness and if you have not been able to apply the word to your own life and see the results most times you will not be able to, you will not be drawn to it i'll give you an example of myself i used to be very angry anger was inside me but when i read that anger lies in the bosom of the fool and the fool says there is no god immediately i'll say that anger even if it's coming forward i'll remember that scripture because if i if i say if the bible says the fool says there's no god then I, it means i'm so if the if one is applying the word to himself he will be drawn to it all the time but laziness most time do not make people to study the word thank you thank you sir so laziness is why many do not have desire to study the scriptures many hands that is wonderful you see that person at the last I, I, our brother from the uh, french uh, class please Uh, merci, je remercie Dieu pour cette question. Et, euh, la raison pour laquelle les, les gens ne voudraient pas écouter la vérité, c'est simplement parce que nous sommes à la dernière minute selon les conseils que l'apôtre Paul a donné à Timothée dans 2 Timothée chapitre 4. Le troisième verset dit que les gens vont détourner les oreilles de la vérité et chercher leur propre parole qui les dirige vers la paix the show the sermon mercy he said that the reason why the people are not uh, interested in the word of god is that is according to paul prophecy in uh, first Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 that said that uh, people uh when this time comes that's the last day that the people will no longer listen be interested in the word of god but we, they will turn their ears to fables God bless you. That's a wonderful contribution. Thank God for that. Yes, give it to somebody here. Then we'll stop that and go to the next question. So you can stand up so let him see you. God bless you, sir. Oh, hold on, let him come. Come to the front, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In my own opinion, the those who read the um, uh, computer said garbage in, garbage out. Because the custodians of the scriptures, they had nothing to offer. And then those who have been taught, they are not grounded, the, the custodians, they were not grounded. And th they have nothing to hand over. And then people got, got, got worried of those let me use the word nonsense. Praise the Lord. God the custodians you. are not grounded themselves. It's so they right. have nothing to offer. It's all right. They are not grounded. Therefore, there has nothing to offer. And that is why there is no much desire of the world of God. I remember something. A policeman walked out to he walk, he walked up to me that I should come to his house. He's having some marital problem. In fact, he was so bitter against his wife. I said, It's all right. I said, sir. I will visit the house. I'm traveling to Sokoto to, to see one of our chapter. However, I have this cassette. I brought out this, this, this cassette. Uh, be careful with your marriage because of what? God bless you. I said, go and watch it. I said, call your wife. And do you know that that was how the issue was settled? I did not go there again to do any, any prayer of healing or deliverance. I just, in fact, that's how, more of, I have so many of them. Once they come on this issue, I say it's okay. You think I think somebody came. This issue of sickness. I say it's okay. There's a preached preach by our director in massacre. Something healing and deliverance, right? I just say you just go and watch this message, and that was all. Please, there should be emphasis on the scriptures, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Yes, fine. The last question is, why are God's people forgetful hearers? Why are the people of God forgetful hearers of God's word? Why are we forgetful hearers of the world? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, bec 
become forgetful hearers when our heart is overcharged with so many things, especially in these last days. When you are thinking about how to take care of your children's school fees, how to take this, care, even when the scripture says you should not think about it, but the devil will force you. So even when the word, you think that the person you are talking to is hearing you, they are not hearing you because their mind is not there. And it happened to some of us here. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's why the Bible said we should offload all these things. Because if the word of God has no space in your life, that's not how you will practice what you don't you do not hear. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Uh, like I said, the Bible says that our heart should not be overcharged. We what we sovereignty, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because of lack of uh, repetition. Okay. Because absence, absence of repetition of, repetition of, repetition. of God's Thank word. You, sir. Amen. I think we are leaders. So if we, if, if, if we do not appoint you, don't stand up and begin to talk. Isn't it? We are leaders. So let's maintain that distance. God bless you. You over there, son. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when, when the word of God is not rooted and granted in us the power of the air comes and still does work from us so as we are hearing this word of god we don't allow the word of god to be to be rooted in us by being a hearer and the doer of the word by by doing that we will not be able to get to hear us thank you amen that the word be rooted now how can the word be rooted how can we be grounded in the knowledge of the scripture Okay, yeah, give it to him. From there, you go to the back. Praise God. Um, I did not see the hand of our sisters flying up. Amen. Amen. In my own little experience, meditation is very much needed in a Christian life. Yes, okay. I used to experience meditation as a sort of initiation because the deeper you meditate, the deeper the spirit enters into you. As we meditate on the words, the deeper the spirit enters. Any sister? It's okay. Give it to this brother here, son. See him. It's all right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I was a young convert, I learned something from my pastor, which I still put into practice till today. And that thing is... He said, when you are going through scriptures, don't just rush it and run away. Read it the first time, the second time, the third time. By the time you do that, unconsciously, you will memorize that word. Even if it's a whole chapter, I discover it's working perfectly well. By the time I read it the first time, I might not get the meaning. The second time, the third time, I will discover that unconsciously, that word has already entered and by so doing the word of God is always increasing praise the Lord Amen. so when we hear messages we go back, we revisit that message not that we take notes and we dump it we go back, we study back those things that we are taught and when we study it that way the word of God remains in us God praise bless the Lord you. Amen and more importantly, of important note, in our chapter's meeting, please, there should be emphasis on the message of this movement. Get the CDs. Play the CDs. Even if the coordinator or the chapter leader will minister on that day, at least let us slot in our messages. There are so many. In fact, there are so many. Get them. In fact, this is how I do in KB. Whenever I watch, I insult on whenever I visit and we play a message like that, I will encourage them to buy it, to get it. And the rest of them, I think I we are holding a a, 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 a program in one in one of in one of the states within our zone. I sent one of the chapter leaders there and I asked him to carry to, to teach from 
and worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. Get message from that from that book and thank God He did. Let's do so. Our coordinators, both our state coordinators, our government coordinators, our chapter leaders, we should emphasize on the materials of the movement. I told you about. The, I, I just told you about that policeman. When he came in, of that he worshiped with a quiet church, not even holy more member. And that's how I do it. He said, okay, please, I just carry this cassette. Just go and listen to it. I took it to him. I gave it to him. And that was how everything was. Over the following week, as the wife came and joined holiness movement, get the materials. Emphasize on it. Play it in your house. Put it everywhere. Even, praise the Lord. I think nobody in my church is actually here. In the church I pastor. There, was it which month? The month of February. All the, our Bible study, Tuesday Bible study, Thursday deliverance hour, Sunday schools. It was holiness movement material I used all through that month. In some of the Bible studies, we do that. Let's emphasize on our materials. They see this. There are so many messages. Just so I can come to Abuja and spend a day or two. Get all the messages, one after the other. Get it. Please, there is every need for that. And by the grace of God, we will be grounded. Like as I was finishing the program in Sokoto on Sunday. In fact, I emphasize on this book, I adornment. They came and we are buying. I don't mean, say, get it. All the issues say, show me in the Bible. Where is it? Troza, this, that. I said, where there are verses. But if you get that book, this God, if God used the servant of God, he, he did a lot of work on that book. There are a lot of discoveries on that book. And if you bend down and study that book, read that very book, I'm telling you the truth. You won't be tossed and turned around. I'm telling you the truth. Get the materials. Emphasize on our on our books. One of my member that God, in fact, he's not actually here. On hearing that, he, as he got converted, joined holiness movement, and then got converted, then something happened. He carried this book, God's Holiness and Judgment, to our nature. Before you know it, that is what that church used as their Sunday school. In our nature. They used as their Sunday school. I gather all the materials from my general overseer. Christ the answer here in Abuja. Our headquarters of my ministry is in Abuja here. I gather all the books written by our daddy. Most of the cities. In fact, they worth 17,000 naira and I pay it. I gather it. I say, sir, have this. And believe in me. My ministry believes in holiness. Preaches it. But a time came. Our GS was almost taken away. But after reading most of the materials and the rest of the, his message changed. To the point that one of the most respected elder in my ministry says that in this hour they, they just came back from a international, I mean, I mean national and married men uh, uh, conference. In fact, that when our general overseer was speaking, preaching, that he was asking, "Is this our general overseer or somebody else?" I say that is holiness movement material. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what I was saying, and I'm telling you the truth. I love this movement. I love every materials of this movement. If you go to my office, it's there. In my house, it's there. In my car, it's there. Everywhere it is. Some of our chapter leaders are here. Anywhere they go, they have our seats inside their, inside their back. A woman is here. They carry it. Woman, just have this. Or buy this. Just go and listen to it. And anyone that read it, our materials, watch the messages. We call back. Can I have more? I say, of course, you will get more. Let's emphasize on it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please, in all our chapter meetings, both in the local government, in the state, which there should be emphasis on our materials. Slot it in. Cut it across the churches and the rest of them. A time came, somebody came to me that let's contribute money and do something. I said, what is this? He said, we should share all this material. We should put them in hotels, in hospitals, in prison. In place, I said, please go ahead. Go ahead. The person that I even called daddy, the police have something in KB of that nature. That they, about I mean, is it, three states, KB, Sokoto, Zanfra, they came together of that nature like that. I told them, they get, and thank God, this life cry and my sample, about 50 copies, we give to the policemen, free, free of charge. We give to them. 
after say what you mean there is something like this there is something like this in a kitty state i don't know who are those from a kitty state let me tell you something this message of preached by daddy what is the message uh, characteristic of the end time somebody came from a kitty to to yahweh where i base i gathered the materials to him i think he bought them we turned back he called me while we are in circle to hold him a holiness crusade he was he told me that pastor I have a testimony i said you must hear this i said what is it he said there is this family hear me that before the woman we talk to the husband she have to go on three days of fasting and prayer i said what kind of marriage is that he said pastor guess what i said what i said that material i bought from i created from you i said what you say he said be careful with your marriage because of heaven he said, when I gave it to the family, as they watched it, the man immediately left Living Faith Church and joined the alive. He came back and said, brother, thank you for this message. All this year had been lost completely. I heard from him call after watching Linda Part 1, watching the life cry and the rest of the coma years, and five, about five different testimonies he gave me. The woman said, now, I, I I know I got fast before I talk to my husband. So you can imagine that. See what the material is doing. Please, let's emphasize on our CDs. Emphasize on our DVDs. Emphasize on our materials. I'm telling you, I was telling you that one of the strongest demons sending more to hell is the demon called denomination. I'm telling you the truth. The demon of denomination has put the Bible by the side and bring in dogma into the church. Send the words to them. You imagine UMCA church is in Sokoto. I was told that after one of the brothers here carrying materials to the reverend, to the church, the pastor said, ah, today being the last day of Sokoto crusade of, 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 and holiness movement, he said he, that he announced that all the church members should come down to the crusade ground. Why? The, it was through our messages. Emphasize on them. And the Lord be with us all. In Jesus' name. Shall we pray? I will dig a little deeper. Jesus was. Must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper. Deeper, yeah. Deeper, yeah. I will dig a little deeper. Jesus was. Must be sweeter. I will dig. A little deeper, deeper, yeah, deeper, yeah, I will dig a little deeper. Jesus was must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper, yeah, deeper, yeah, I will dig a little deeper. Jesus was must be sweeter. I will dig. A little deeper, deeper, yeah. Let's be on our feet as we pray. Ask the Lord, say, Oh God, create in me a divine crave for your word. Help me to go for your word. In our chapter meetings, in our state meetings, in our local government, help us to emphasize on the word. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Talk to God Almighty. Emphasis on the word. Emphasis on the word. Emphasis on scriptures. Emphasis on scriptures. Lord, help us to emphasize on the word of God. Help us to eat it. Help us to digest it. The word. The word. Cause us to preach nothing by the word. To preach nothing by the word of God. Talk to God Almighty. Talk to the King of Kings. Talk to the ancient of days. Give us revelation of your word. In depth knowledge of the scriptures. In depth knowledge of the scriptures. In depth knowledge of the scriptures. Jesus name we pray. Something happened when Jesus rose from the dead. They couldn't realize who he was. Until through the breaking of bread. He said, ah, this people, they can't continue like this. Then something happened in Luke 24. The Bible say he opened their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. That's the, that is the next prayer point. Say, oh Lord, open my understanding to understand the scriptures. Please go to God in prayer. Talk to God Almighty. These are leaders meeting, coordinators meeting. Let us pray with every fervency. Pray with every fervency. Open my understanding. Help us to understand the scriptures. Help us to understand the scriptures.
Jesus. In our space, in all your contentments, in all your acceptance meeting, all the holy bond members, in our acceptance, in our states, in our districts, in our location, upon our understanding, to understand the scriptures, to understand the scriptures, talk to God Almighty, talk to God Almighty, help us ancient of this to understand the scriptures. Open our understanding, open our understanding. Open our understanding. Open our understanding. Open our understanding to understand the scriptures. Thank you, Lord. The word of God is real. The word of God is real. The word of God is reality. Hallelujah. The word of God is real. The word of God is real. The word of God is reality. Hallelujah. Jesus name we pray. The word of God is real. The word of God is real. The word of God is reality. Hallelujah. The word of Hallelujah. Magana Aya Gaskia. Magana Aya Gaskia. Magana Aya Gaskia. Hallelujah. The word of God is real. The word of God is real. The word of God is reality. Hallelujah. When Paul was departing, he says, I know we shall see our face no more. But he told them something. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give us an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Amen. Amen. You are going to lift up your hand and you will place your allegiance to the wall. That Lord, my life is tied to your word on today. In all the chapters I am coordinating, the state, Lord, my state, is tied to the word of God. Then preach in this movement. My chapter is tied. It's tied to the world. It's tied to the world. Open your mouth and make that page before the Lord. Lord, our chapter. Lord, our states. Where we come from. Lord, our life is tied to the world. It's tied to the world. Open your mouth and pray. Talk to God Almighty. Be you clean, now bear the vessels of the Lord. Depart from her. Touch not the unclean thing. Praise the Lord. The scripture is telling us, as children of God in holiness, because that's his commandment, that we should worship him in the beauty of his holiness, and we should be holy also. The Lord demanded from us, that we should depart from anything that can bring defilement into our life, into our spirit, soul, and body. The Lord God of hosts from creation has never told man to be unholy. It has been, be ye separated unto me, be holy unto me, keep my commandment, keep my will, keep my days, keep my doubt, my laws, keep all. It has been so. And now we have been drawn again by the Lord from different denominations into a particular place called Holiness Movement. We have to make sure that we do as the Lord has commanded. Departing from things that are not of God and living and bringing in things that are holy because you are carrying the Lord. You bear the word of the Lord. You are one who is now telling people the different things to do to be holy. 
Like as we listened to her sister yesterday, restitution now is a matter that people only call a holiness revival movement on some certain issues of restitution. It's not just an exaggeration. I'm telling you a fact. Pastors, even holy preachers, even holy preachers. I remember uh, Watchman is older than holiness revival movement. But oftentimes in my state, Imo, the persons of Watchman will call me, they will come and say, look at this matter, look at this matter. What cancer do you advise me to give that family, that man and his wife? And through the scripture and the grace of God, when we go through the scripture and the counsel is given, they are satisfied. Are you hearing me so? If they are not satisfied, they will not come again, they will not call again. Is it not so? So we are now carrying the things the men of old carried for God. Bringing other people to the righteousness and holiness of life. And we must not be seen in certain area, in certain quarter, in certain things doing. It's no longer. It's no longer business as usual. It's no longer business as usual. Where you work is no longer business. You are in your business dealings is no longer as usual. Everything you do now must be in holiness. Because you will bear the vessels of the Lord. Because you are now the one letting people to know that the Lord God of us has not left his holiness. Amen. Amen. When we see 1 Corinthians 6.17 Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6.17 Second, I think, let me check. 617. He said the same thing, be ye separated, come out from among them. He said the same thing also. Second Corinthians 617. Wherefore, come out from among them. Second Corinthians, rather, 617. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, say the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Amen. Amen. For the Lord to receive us now, because who we are like people who are not people of God, and by his mercy and grace, we are brought back as people of God. We must not touch anything that can bring defilement any longer. So that the Lord shall receive us. Not only in this life, but in the present life to come. So that the Lord will know what to do with you. Come on, separate yourself. Not that you will see the world and hate the world. Not that you see the world and any you condemn the world. No. You come out from the world because you are now a separate color people. You will call out people for God who he will use now for the rest of the world to turn back to him. So as you separate, the Lord will be dealing with you on daily basis on issues concerning yourself, concerning your family, concerning where he has kept you, maybe as a coordinator, chapter leader, one thing or the other. He'll be dealing with you on daily basis so that you will continue walking in his steps. It's very much important. Now, the Lord expects us to walk in his steps. Amen. Amen. We must walk in the steps of the Lord. We are no longer going to walk as we used to walk. We are no longer to, going to behave as we used to behave, but we remain in the steps of the Lord as a family. Now we are as a family. We have families where we came up from. We have our own immediate families, our wife and immediate children. This thing must be seen. It must be maintained. You cannot come out and your wife has not come out. You cannot be separated and your wife is not separated. That means something is still wrong within the family circle. Is it not so? And although we are seeing that today, that many sisters, many men have been separated, but their life partner is not separated. And there is really a problem in such families. But when it's such families who have actually understand what we are doing, the woman listens to her husband, the man listens to his wife, to know that the only thing that can turn our life better for God is holiness. When you see such families now, you see the glory of God upon such families. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Sir? Because when the man is not there, the woman is there. You understand? You find out that your wife interest is no longer fashion. Your wife interest is no longer money, money, money. But seeing that something is done for the Lord. Seeing that 
she assists her husband in whatever the law has committed in his hand so that he will not fail. Is it not so? So now that's what we are doing. Amen. And when we, amen. Remember, I moved to point two. We have 10 minutes. Ah, yes, sir. I have not forgotten, sir. So please, it's going to help us a lot. And I know that God will help the families who both has not understand these issues on ground that they come together on these issues in Jesus' name. Let's see, look. Luke 21, 34 to 36. Luke 21. Luke 24, 21. I'm reading from verse number 34. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the culture shall not grow this day. Luke 21, 34, 36. Luke 21, 34 to 36. I'm sorry, please. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that that day come upon you unawares. 35. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be Accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Praise the Lord. Watch ye therefore. Take it to yourself. Be careful. Don't be a careless believer, but be careful, a careful Christian. Don't just get excited because you now have a conviction in your heart that you are not only a member of the holiness movement, but you are saved. And go about dotting yourself, not minding that. I, keep, I call it the unguided hour. And it's on this unguided hours the enemy struck anybody. The unguided hour. If in a football match, when you see the defenders, when they overlap, go front, they must go back quickly. So that the enemy will not take them unawares. Is it not so? So please, no matter how you are preaching, no matter how you are evangelizing, have time for your personal prayer life. Have time to seek the face of God. Amen. I'm not, there is family prayer time and there should be individual prayer time. I know very, these days that Many the family praying altars are all many are all gone. There's no more family altars. Say very few that have been maintaining it. The individual prayer life has actually gone bad the way it's not ought to be. Because even now that we have come to this knowledge, some are too busy that they forget their personal defense. Many are too busy. Jesus. Once a while, we will draw himself alone. Is it not so? The prophets of old, once a while, that prophet will withdraw himself. So we ought to, brethren, know that there must be a time. Because you are outside walking, walking, you are too busy preaching to people, evangelizing, making souls for God. The enemy is watching you on guarded hour. It might be a word you will speak. It might be an action you come to the house and that thing your son or your daughter or your wife will say might piss you off. And the enemy has got to you. It's so easy. But if you are here, you who always, no matter how busy you are, create out 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it will not stop what you are doing outside. Talk to him alone. Many of us does not even know that when you are going out evangelism, you should, mostly personal evangelism, you should sit down and talk to him before you step the door. You understand me, sir? They just pick their Bible and go. 
is very much important we talk to him. And there is something I discovered. Some of us talk too much when we are in his presence. We don't allow him to talk. We talk in our prayer, talk and talk, and at times we make repetitions, forgotten that we have asked God that, as if his eyes, ears are heavy not to hear. There was a testimony someone shared to me in this ministry in the Wolebam of Gilead. Those from Imo State will know it. They always have on weekly basis brethren that will enter into the prayer cell alone to pray for 24 hours. And always the Lord will speak. But this particular man, a medical doctor, it was his time. And he spoke to 3 p.m. and said, Lord, I have been talking since. I have been praying. It's so we're getting to when I'm about, about to come out. And you've not said anything. The Lord said, You have been talking alone. You have not allowed me to talk. So I've been listening to you only. You can see that we should put wisdom in anything we do with God. A man has been talking to his father throughout. And his father has been quiet listening to him. And he's not complaining, say, Papa, you have not said anything. No. The father said, how would two people be talking at the same time? Don't you know that when you talk, you wait and allow me to talk also. You understand? So, so when we are in our personal prayer life, in our family prayer meetings, at times, there should be hours of silence. You understand? Maybe praying in the spirit, making groanings in our heart. Silent. To allow him to talk. Maybe there's somebody there he wants to talk. You understand so? At times you say, believer, we feel like staying alone. The Lord maybe something wants to happen. The Lord wants to tell him something. But if that believer could not understand, he will not know and keep doing what he's doing. Then the Lord will look for another person to talk to. Remember that all what we are doing Prayer is the key to everything we are talking about. When you are not praying enough, you will not get enough answer. You will not do evangelism enough. You will not preach enough. Anything will not be enough when you are not praying enough. When you are not praying enough, you might not know when the enemy is encroaching into your territory. Like our pastor leads us in prayer to pray for God blessing us. It's wonderful. But we need the holy money. We need the holy believers that give holy money. There are hot money. The word of the hurting is for the, is for the righteous. The hurting has known that, has known that secret. And there are some gifts you receive that become dangerous to your soul. So we should be very, very careful. As we are talking, praying in our prayer lives, not only when we come here, Lord, whoever will come to defy this movement with any form of gift, no matter the size of the gift, are you hearing me, sir? the Lord should take such a person far away. We don't need such people. We don't need such people. We tell them the Lord will run his ministry. Are you hearing me so? He will still raise up holy believers among us who will bring holy money that will be useful for the gospel. Please, when we are praying, we should pray all round concerning holiness movement. One, we should, one minute more. We should not be excited because the enemy is still watching and planning his strategy. The enemy is planning his own strategy. As we are turning people back, people are saying what they could not tell anybody is call it restitution. Do you think that Satan is happy? He's planning his strategy. But I know that whatsoever his strategy is, the Lord will give us the grace to overcome his tricks in the name of Jesus. Please, it will help us so, so much to understand that prayer should go a long way with our life. You don't wake up without praying. You don't retire to bed without thanking him for the day. It is very much important to know, make sure that a believer is one who is always, because the moment you are praying always, you are before the presence, you are always in the presence of the king. Are you hearing me so? And he always see you, know why you come and tell you the things to do and how to do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, people of God, we thank the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to rush some scriptures, very just flash some scriptures so that when we'll be going into There's our. There's no more time for scriptures. Let's go to discussion. 
Okay? So, the discussions I want us to discuss per concerning the topics which says personal and family holiness and dedication. I want us to look at is there are just few items, about six items I want us to discuss. Maybe the Lord laid that in my heart and they were well jotted down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Discussion. I think whoever is contributing should not spend so much time. So the others can be able to talk. Now we might be able to cover what we have. Amen. The first one is why is it necessary for a family to maintain a holy living? Why is it necessary for a family to maintain a holy living? That's our first thing to discuss. I think after that discussion, we'll go to the second one. Why is it necessary for a family to maintain a holy living? I'm sure contributors contributors okay where is the other microphone look at that hand up I think in this we might take only about three contributors on this so that we don't exceed time praise God Hallelujah. it is necessary for a family to maintain a holy living because the Bible said without holiness no man shall see God and we know that if a family is living in a holy life, it's like there is a world that is built around them. And it will be difficult for the devil to break into that world. But if any one of them commits sin, like uh, in the time of uh, uh, somebody in the Bible, I've forgotten his name actually, but if anybody commits sin and the devil is able to enter their midst, there will be a problem. Yeah. That is why it is necessary to live in holiness and to keep that holiness going on. Praise God. Let's yeah. take advantage of the questions to be practical. We want to raise holy people. Yes. So please, if the Lord inspires you, say what will help the brethren. Yes. Is that clear? So let's release ourselves to preach, to reveal things that will help families here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, it's, it's important for a family to be holy because... God may start his plan with a man, but it will end with the family. For example, in our text, the Lord said, I know Abraham, that he will teach his family to follow the ways of the Lord, so that what I have said concerning him will come to pass. And family needs to be holy, so that the name of God will be glorified and the plan of God will be preserved. And that family needs to live by the word of God, separate from the world, walk in fear of God and walk in love. So that what God begins with the father, we end up. He like family got problem because of the children. They were not living holy. And I believe if a member of the family, the wife or the children, are not living right with God, it will affect the plan of God for that entire family, which is started with the father. So holiness is important to preserve the purpose of God in the family. Very well, holiness is important in the family because when it's maintained in a family, the Lord is present in that family. Amen. The third person, who is the third person, Francis? A woman. A woman, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holiness is very necessary to be maintained in a family. Let me use my family as a story, case study. Before this holiness revival movement came, Though we are Christian, my husband is a pastor, but one of my children is is uh, somehow not. Uh, I, let me say, <laughs> is somehow uh, is a, is like thorns in my flesh, and it do make me get angry easily. Even if I'm trying to maintain peace, it will Satan will just use him against me, 
and uh, I will be so bad, I will be so bitter, and uh, I was sometimes after praying. Uh, by the time I will get up, it will be the one to make me to get angry, and all my prayers will be watered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, that time is like uh, the coverage of God is not really upon us, despite our prayer, yeah. because sometimes I will be on my knees from twelve to four a.m. praying, interceding for people. And there was a time that uh, after prayer, I went to bed, and then uh, so few minutes after. It just I heard a, a voice from their room that mommy, please come. So by the time I got there, I said what happened, and he said he was having problem in his stomach. And uh, before I say let us pray, I started praying for him. And uh, by the time I say drink the blood of Jesus, he was on the ground. He died. He, he just stretched and breathed his last breath. So I started cry unto God that God this is not your covenant with me this and that that this boy must not die like that so as we are praying the my husband came to join me and we started praying for him but to the glory of God God restored him back to life Amen. but after after that I was now asking God why is this happening why did this happen and God said we did not uh, we did not give chance for holiness here because hunger is not part of holiness rot is not part of holiness evils uh, evil utterance negative utterance is not part of holiness so i was struggling of my home to maintain holiness in the family but there was no way but when this ministry come per se by the grace of god i have learned so many things and i am i'm trying i'm by the grace of God are practicalizing it Amen. and whenever it comes with that spirit again I will just smile I will say Satan you are failed because now this is a family that God is dwelling an example of only only family so we must people are looking onto us and we must remain and maintain where God places us so whenever it comes with his character I will just tell him, I will say, praise, because his name is praise. I will say, praise. Remember there is heaven. Remember there is hell. Remember that is all is true holiness that you can see the Lord. So, just, just try to maintain peace. Keep yourself in the band of holiness. And by the grace of God, all the harrow that Satan has been thrown into the family that has been affecting the family, we have overcome it. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. So it's very, very good. It's very important, very necessary for a family to maintain holiness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Parents, do we spend time praying for our children? Do we spend time praying for our children? It is very, very necessary because of the way the world is today. No matter how you are praying, create our time, husband and wife, pray for your children. Spend time pray for their salvation. Spend time pray for God to have mercy on the children. Because today, children are no longer as they were when we were growing up. When you talk to, you are talking to them here, their mind is somewhere. But praying for the kids always will help the kids in Jesus' name. And I think that one is enough on that. Family should maintain holiness so that the presence of God should forever remain with that family. The very moment the family goes unholy, God cannot dwell in a dirty house. The family turns an old wine and the Lord will gradually shift from that family. Question number two. What role do parents ought to play today seeing that the world is highly polluted in all spheres of life what role does Christian parents ought to play in their families to the floor should I repeat the question what role do Christian parents ought to play in their families okay, let me know that especially over their children Seeing that the world is so polluted today. 
Praises. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We read in the biography of Mary's lesson that while she was a teenager, she did a lot of bad, bad things, which when the report comes to her mother, all that her mother will do is to hold her hand and take her to the bedside, kneel down with her and pray with her and make her to pray. And tell her the implication of her sin, the means to live for God. And through that, Mary's lesson became inspired and came to Nigeria to bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we will do likewise for our children, through that, they will be able to uphold the value, the Christian value. Amen. And He's telling us that always we don't need to smack the child. We don't need always to beat the child. We do some tokens also. Amen. Next person. Francis. Francis, after that, we give this road. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I would say the first thing that we should do as parents is one. We should first of all dedicate and consecrate the children to God first. And I'll give an example of my own children. I have five boys. Even though people used to say boys are troublesome, but my children are not, are not troublesome at all. Even as small as the nine-year-old boy, he goes out for evangelism. And I just noted that because he was dedicated and consecrated to God. And I know whatever is given to God, God can never diminish it. And so I see that in their lives. And I'll give an example of one of my sons that went for interview entering a university. As he was answering the question, one of the things the interviewer said is that, is your father a pastor? Because of the way he was answer and also i would say another rule is that let us make our children read read good christian books is a very good tool to build them right from when they are small i have a boy of 17 but i'll say that the books he has read and even when we are doing money devotion the exposition he makes sometimes i run to my study room and i kneel down and start crying to god that god please some of these things this boy has shown me, I have not seen it in my own Bible. And when I checked through the Bible, I found out that what he's saying is true. And I'm not to cognizance that because they've been reading some of the books I have in my study room. So I would say that one, we should dedicate them to God. Two, we should pray with them. Then three, we should give them good Christian books to read right from when they are young. And you see that when they grow up, they will not depart from the knowledge we have uh, already obtained. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want us to read Genesis 18, 19. Genesis 18, verse 19. I'm I'm reading. For I know him, the Lord is talking about Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him. And that, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment to the Lord. That the Lord will bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken about him. Praise the Lord. Like our brother rightly said, taking, giving a child to God early in life is very much important. My children, I dedicated them. But my last son, I did a strange thing over him when he was born. The day he was born, around 3 a.m., I was called on phone. Then in the morning, very early, I went to see my wife in the hospital. And when I saw the baby, he said, boy, I did not even talk to my wife. I lifted this baby up and said, you shall be called Habakkuk. You shall know no evil. You shall know only the good. And all the days of your life shall dwell in the house of the Lord. I don't know why I did that. And I was
Take this. Pastor Sam, Mark, this boy will serve the Lord. But they were not there when I did that thing. You understand so? So it's very much important that when we have children, we give them back to God immediately so that God can mold their life, direct their life. And another thing the parents will do is, as you are doing all this to them, you and your wife should be an example. Of, you will not be correcting them and fighting every day in the house. Or exchange your word on daily basis. Remember, they learn a lot from parents. They are, they are snapping whatever the parents are doing. So, please, as we are molding our children, we should not mold them negatively. They should not see us be misbehaving. They, because so will take that character. So will take that behavior. Ten more minutes. You move to prayer. Let's give to Mama Lafia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I learned this from some experienced mothers. A sister said when they got married, before they had any child, they knelt down together with the husband and prayed and said, Lord, we don't want broilers in this family. Broilers mean, you know what broilers, yeah. what, what we use broilers for. So they knelt down and prayed that they want to their children, uh, they want the children of Abraham, Isaac. They wanted Isaac, they don't want brothers. And praise God, all their children, even today as I'm speaking, they are good children. Amen. So you start praying for your family, your children, right? when they are not yet in the born. womb. They are still in the womb. Yes. And that is because, and when they come out, if you don't train them properly, some, 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 13 mm. is waiting for all of us when we refuse to do it. And I learned something again, that you, you know, they will provoke you. The children will provoke you. But the Lord doesn't want you to react the way they act. If you act because they provoke you and you are getting angry, you are losing the, the blessing. But that you should love them. Right now as I'm speaking, not that they are in line with me, but they see me going, going, going. Even as I'm coming here, I had to beg them. At first, I didn't want to beg them. I begged them. I said, please, I'm going to Gwagwalada. And, you know, you have to relate with them, no matter their condition, no matter their, their, the lifestyle they are living. You relate with them, love them in their condition, and God will deliver them. Amen. Amen. Lastly on this, where is it that some husbands find it difficult or wives to forgive each other? Why? Is it difficult for husbands and wives to forgive each other? Contributors. Why Christians, families, uh, husband and wife find it difficult yes. to forgive one another? The major cause of such attitude is lack of being sanctified. Because sanctification uproots the root of bitterness. Yes. At the time you are born again, it's like the branches are cut off. But when you are sanctified, right from the from the root of your heart there is a cleansing proper cleansing of the heart that will be love the fruits of the spirit will become so prominent and real in your lives you love one another in the family you forgive one another you'll be looking at the forgiveness jesus has forgiven you so one of the things that causes it because they are not sanctified if they are totally sanctified they have the experience i tell you there will be love in the family they will easily forgive one another so they need to be sanctified thank you sanctification is very much necessary 
But there are some cases in some families that each other has sworn not to forgive so easy. I handled a case like that. But I thank God for Jesus, for his counsel over that family. I handled a case like that. It happened that this man loved his wife that he can swore on behalf of his wife. And one day his wife called him and told him about his infidelity. The man almost hung himself. <laughs> so please, I keep telling people from my own understanding in the issue of offenses and the offended until you reconcile you are guilty before God. Please, in the issue of offenses, the offender and the, off and the offended, they are both guilty until they reconcile. God does not want to know why you have refused to forgive each other. He wants us to forgive. It's very much important. He wants us to forgive. And lastly, <coughs> why are there many called holiness Christians still get involved in gossip, in anger, in acts, characters that are not pleasing to God? That's our last discussion. Why is many holiness believers they are holy we see them in conferences we see them in our state fellowships but they see gossip they see anger there are characters that I don't know how to describe it that they see possess why only two people will speak come to the front one Nobody man one front. woman okay Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If these people are actually Christians, holy, my brother, I think that these are the fruit of the flesh. And except one bears all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, he has no hope of heaven. Amen. So I, in my own spirit, if a, a somebody who calls himself a Christian should bear all this fruit, then he should go back and repent because he has not repented. I am using myself as an example. I was a, I, I've been a pastor. And until the holiness revival comes to stay, mm. in Amen, mm. then I've been found, I found myself doing little things that if I speak, begin to speak, then you close your ears. But it is now when I have repented, then I begin to know that I have repented. Even mm. my spirit bears witness that I am now repented. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I think another problem to that is a prayerless life. When a believer is not praying enough, all those characters come in. A prayerless life will bring those things in one. So we actually need to talk to God always in prayer. Now today, like as I wake up this morning, I said, Lord, today, whatever I will say, wherever I will go, directly. That was what I said this morning. And I often say it every morning. You understand me so? A prayerless believer must get involved. No matter how many times he's born again, he must get involved in these characters. Until he began to spend time on his knees to talk to God. Amen. The second person will be the last. A woman. A woman. A woman. No. Ah, no. Who are you giving? Oh, let her go there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like our brother says, why, even though we are still believers and we are not portraying holiness, is we are not portraying the fruit. I mean, um, what is expected of us? Yes. It's because the fruit. As some of us, even when we've gotten the fruits, we are still struggling. The fruits, what it ought to do, I'm still working on myself. I've not even gotten there at all. Yes. What um, what we are, what the fruit is to do is you to You are still bring working out. on yourself. What happens, sir? <laughs> you are still working on yourself. I mean, yeah. I'm still explaining, sir. 
Okay. I pray you say you have not gotten it yet. No, no. I said when we've gotten it, even okay. though we've gotten it, it is still bringing out issues in our life in the sense that the, the things we are supposed to be to be supposed to be coming out willingly. We are not to struggle to be good. We are not to struggle to do the right thing. We are not to struggle to say the right word. When we are beginning to struggle, we have not been granted. We are not put these fruits in full uh, utility. Yes. Those, like when you are moving, I want to portray what I'm saying. When you are moving, you are a driver, you are driving. Somebody come and drive roughly at you. And before you know it, the next thing he will give you shaking. He will just give you work at behind. You are not struggling to resist. You are not struggling to hold yourself, not to, not to, you know, not to, not to retaliate. It flows in out of you without you knowing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The work of the Spirit. We are Lord. grateful for uh, what we have learned. Live a prayerful life. Holiness will become easy. Without prayer, prayerful life, holiness will be difficult. Be very, very difficult. Uh, holiness is keeping your house clean daily, sweeping it from dust, from sun, from piece of paper and other things. As you keep praying, you will be cleaning yourself, cleansing yourself from sin from pride, from every sinful tendency as you keep on praying. So live a prayerful life. Please steer up yourself to pray. When we come to a meeting like this, there are people who when they are praying, they keep quiet. Or as they are praying, they are just shaking their head like this to show that some, em some emotions are going on or else some <laughs> things are going on. But no actual weight coming up to the Lord. Because prayer is a difficult thing. The devil, once he quenches prayer in the church, righteousness and holiness is going. So please regain your prayer life. Amen. Regain this prayer life in the family. The sin will not stay. Regain the prayer life. If, if uh, like, like the branches of uh, like the branches of trees shaking like this, flies cannot land on them because the place is shaking. Your prayer life makes sin not able to land on your life. So, with your wife, with the children, teach them prayers. Pray also a lot for them. Your heart will be free from anger. You will confess everything before God. You will be asking God for grace all the time. And the Lord will be supplying grace. Make sure you carry your wife along in this holiness movement. Yes. Otherwise, she will become a stumbling block for you tomorrow. <laughs> You will become, she will become, you, your relationship will become unequal because the things you are knowing, the discipline you are getting now, she won't have it. And then you won't understand yourself tomorrow. Please carry your wife along. Coordinators, carry your wives along. I expect your wife to be coming to meetings in Abuja like this. You don't begin to leave, give reasons why they are not coming. They didn't come yesterday. They are not coming today. They are not coming tomorrow. It will hurt you tomorrow. So please carry your wife along. And as our brother suggests, make these materials, this literature, this CDs available for your family. Let the children listen to them. Let them read them and also understand uh, God and his ways. God bless you.